By 2050, two-thirds of the world's population will live in cities. Urbanization is happening faster than at any time in human history. I think that the problem in cities as they grow is only going to become worse. Globally, 900 million people are living in slums. Cities can't add housing fast enough. Today, an estimated one billion vehicles are already bringing urban areas to a standstill. Cities consume three quarters of the world's energy each year and are responsible for around 50% of greenhouse gas emissions. These are challenges our cities have been facing for decades. But now some city leaders, businesses, and even citizens are taking new approaches to tackling these old problems. This is where technology and imagination meet together and we create new cities. They're transforming their cities with technology. Seoul, South Korea, one of the most connected, digitized cities in the world. Home to 10 million people. This city has a population density twice that of New York. In Seoul, the use of data is seen as the key to tackling some of the big challenges of city life, like moving its people around. City workers here use sophisticated technology to understand and transform how the city and its metro can be run. Mr. Kim is the manager of City Hall Station. The subway system transports 7 million people every day. It's widely regarded as one of the best in the world. And the entire network, from wheels to workers, relies on continually updating information. The speed and frequency of the trains can be constantly adjusted to keep everything running smoothly. Smart cameras measure how many passengers are boarding and how quickly, and sensors on the trains and tracks monitor every last component to provide early warnings when maintenance is required and prevent a costly breakdown. And all of the data ends up in the hands of this man. 안녕하십니까. 여기는 서울시청입니다. 저는 양윤계 주무관이고요. 여기는 토피스가 있는 서울시청이 되겠습니다. 감사합니다. 다시 한번 TOPIS is the city's transport, operation and information service. And this is where Mr. Yang and his controllers get to grips with all the data. Not just from the subway, but from the city's buses, taxis and roads. the here in Topis, their goal is to use the data to anticipate problems and stop congestion building up in the first place. So they use smartphone apps, social media, and the web to give citizens real-time alerts and alternative routes, 
and keep this mega city running smoothly. Transport is just the start. Seoul city planners are using data to better understand more of the big challenges this fast-growing city faces. From air pollution to affordable housing. High above the control room, there's one man who keeps tabs on the entire city. His name is Park Won Soon. But in this area, what is happening in this area? You can see the system all over the place. He's a former human rights activist, a political outsider. Now, the soldiers have been working in the city for the last 27 years. And for the last seven years, he's been the mayor of Seoul. For millennia, communities have been overseen by powerful leaders like Mr. Park. But he wants to turn this on its head, handing responsibility to Seoul's 10 million citizens. 사람들은 정보에 대해서 굉장히 굶주림이 있습니다. 사실은 어, 알고 싶어하는 욕구가 있죠. The mayor's office can plug into real-time data on just about anything in Seoul, from police call-outs to street protests to pollution levels. From his office, the mayor can even tell you the real-time price of apples. 가장 싼 어, 여기 송동구에 여기 금남시장은 800원밖에 안 되잖아요. He's a bit more coy about the data the city holds on individual citizens, but the mayor is clear in his desire to share much of the information he has at his fingertips. So, I'm saying that Seoul is the most visible city. I'm saying that that is not just a public announcement. The people take that and use it in a safe way and use it as a tool. This treasure trove of data is spawning an industry all of its own. There are an estimated 30,000 startups in South Korea, many of which are offering innovative solutions to challenges like the city's housing shortages. One company uses this open source data to pair up young people looking for accommodation with older citizens who have rooms to spare. It's a tiny offshoot of an industry that is growing rapidly in cities across the world. By 2020, this so-called smart city industry will be worth an estimated $1.5 trillion. There'll be investment in everything, from networks and sensors to new apps and services, from the world's biggest technology firms to innovative new startups working from someone's front room. This is the headquarters of Flair, a startup based in Kenya. Its young entrepreneurs are working with real-time data sourced from that most ubiquitous of modern innovations, the smartphone. Kenya's capital, Nairobi, is emerging as a vibrant tech hub. It is also one of the fastest growing cities in the world. Home to 4.2 million people, it's more than doubled its population in the last 20 years. As in many cities in developing countries, the aging, inadequate infrastructure is struggling to cope. Caitlin Dolcart is one of a new generation of business leaders trying to fill some of the gaps. The problem in cities as they grow is only going to become worse when you don't actually have the systems in place to actually coordinate and figure out how to do that. And like I think that the emergencies are the best example of that because literally every second and minute counts. It's 10 a.m. in central Nairobi. Paramedic Nick Mokua has been dispatched to an emergency call. But for many in trouble in this city, an ambulance isn't always the answer. Here, yeah, there's always traffic, but if you respond, if you use the middle road, they will give you a glove driving fast. The problem isn't a shortage of ambulances. Nairobi has 150 of them. 
double the number needed in an average city. But the city has no centralized emergency service to coordinate them. Residents here are faced with 50 different numbers to call for help, and no guarantee when or whether their ambulance will arrive. Nairobi is, doesn't lack resources. There's plenty of ambulances and there's plenty of hospitals. What there isn't is information to how do you get access to that, starting with tools that we have today. But from that, we're building a system that no one's ever had before. So you can think about it like Uber in the sense that you touch a button and you know the rest is figured out for you. You just know that the vehicle is coming your way. The app aims to do the job of a centralized emergency service, compiling real-time data to coordinate and connect patients in need, available ambulances, and the right hospitals or healthcare providers. Nick and his colleagues reach the patient 12 minutes after receiving the call. Pretty fast for Nairobi, where an ambulance can take up to two hours to arrive. So painful. Hey, can, you, can, you, can you go your toes? You go your toes? You go your toes. Ah, so you go your toes. My toes are very fine. Ah. Hi. Ah. We shall carry the samples of the drug ah. test that he's been using. Antibiotics are over there. Nick's team soon discovers the reason for the call: a gangrenous toe, excruciatingly painful, but not life-threatening. Had this man suffered a stroke or heart attack, this smartphone-based system could have helped save his life. Across the developing world, innovators are increasingly exploiting existing technology to help citizens cope with their city's overstretched infrastructure. In America, innovators are also looking ahead to the next wave, anticipating data-driven technologies that could help predict problems before they even happen. Boston, Massachusetts is the 10th largest metropolitan area in America. It's home to 4.8 million residents. And while Boston may be one of the oldest urban settlements in this country, it's fast developing world leading technology that could help shape the cities of the future. This is the mission of MIT's Sensible City Lab to anticipate the impact of technology on urban life and use it to transform the way cities are run. Here at MIT, we are not in the urban solutions business. We are in the urban imagination business. And this is where technology and imagination meet together and we create new cities. Lead researcher Fabio Duarte believes that data-driven technology will change our whole approach to urban planning. When I start collecting data from nature, from infrastructure, from people, and putting this data together, then we can see new things about the city that we're not able to see. It's a mission that takes Fabio's team to some unlikely parts of the city. So I assume that there is. There is sewage. There is. Collecting data from a sewer isn't a challenge these researchers relish. So they've brought along a friend. Meet Luigi. This is Luigi as a whole entire robot. This is the brain of Luigi telling it how to function. Luigi is a probe built with a big job in mind. We're able to use stool samples and their urine samples in a sewage to understand people's health patterns and health behaviors more at the source. This is no crapshoot. The samples Luigi is collecting could help reveal new ways to manage a public health crisis. From prescription painkillers to heroin, America is in the grip of an opioid crisis. Across the country, Nearly two and a half million people are hooked on opioids. Nationwide, these drugs are responsible for more deaths every day than gun crime or road traffic accidents. In Massachusetts, between 2014 and 2016, 
opioid deaths rose by an estimated 50%. Data alone won't stop this opioid epidemic, but data could start to provide city authorities with the tools to build better public health plans. That's what the researchers at MIT are hoping. In the lab, they're learning how to get data from poo. We have the sample that we extracted from the sewage, and what we're going to do is we're going to take it, and what we want to extract from it is to separate out the microbes from it, the bacteria and the viruses and the DNA, so that we can process it for DNA data. And we also want to extract the chemicals from it so that we have data on chemical uh, excreted from humans. Using these techniques, the researchers can learn when and where there's been a surge in opioid use or bad batches of heroin. But they could also be deployed to take control of a host of fast-moving health crises. The question is, now what are you looking for in that information from the sewage? That will allow us to see information on, for example, if we have viruses that are kind of becoming more prevalent with regards to an epidemic, or maybe not even an epidemic, just basically an outbreak, let's say like influenza in an area. As researchers at MIT continue efforts to shape the city of the future, they're constantly looking for new ways to reveal more about the city of today. That's where we change cities, when we put different data from different sources together. Which is why the team has started talking rubbish. Boston's garbage trucks travel the same streets every week, making them the perfect vehicles for the collection of constantly changing environmental data. This one's been equipped with temperature sensors, humidity sensors, and thermal imaging cameras that keep check on the energy efficiency of Boston's buildings and the quality of the city air. Although we deal with technology and we create technology here at a daily basis, we know that people are at the core of the cities, at the core of society. So it's only by making people smarter, but also sensitive, that we can create better cities. Whether it's city planners using data to transform life from on high, or citizens using data to build solutions from the ground up, they're finding new ways to use technology to tackle the challenges faced by modern-day megacities. Data from the city and making sense of this data that we can change the cities of the future.